right. So if you want to just introduce yourself, your name, your age, where you're from. Yeah, for sure. Well, first of all, I appreciate you having me here on, on the pod. I mean, it's an amazing aesthetic. I'm excited. The plants give it positive energy. So we're definitely out here. So my name is Chris Petiri. I'm the founder and the owner of Crispy NYC, which is a clothing brand that I started about three years ago, almost three years ago, two and a half, three years ago. Uh, I'm from Lodi, New Jersey. I grew up there mostly all my life. I bounced around to Hackensack, to Boston, back to Jersey, to Miami. So I've been a lot of places. I'm 36 years old, and that's it. We, we, we fired up to be here. Awesome. So, so let me know, like, have you always been a creative, or since you started this three years ago, is that when you got into your creative bag, or has this been a long time coming? I feel like it's been a really long time coming. I never had a clothing brand up until actually about four years ago. I had another clothing brand with one of my ex-partners that had nothing to do with Crispy, and I started that for about a year and a half. We built that to, to really good heights, and then I decided to go out my own way and do Crispy because I wanted to represent myself, and I wanted to push the brand to the vision that I had, not to somebody else's vision. So that's why I started uh, Crispy. But before that, I've always been very creative. I've tried tons of different things to try to make it work and try to see what was my actual purpose, my passion. I've been doing motivational videos for years now, ever since I can remember. So I figured the best way to incorporate my positive vibes and, and my message that I want to get across is a clothing brand. Gotcha. So you're saying you had some other creative ventures and you've always kind of been a creative. If you could just maybe name a few of the jobs that you've had in the past, like yeah, give, no. give me kind of like the Rolodex of everything you've done for, up until this point. For sure. I mean, out of high school, my first job was in Pizza Hut as a manager in Pizza Hut, which I did that for a couple of years. And then after I did Pizza Hut, I wanted to venture off into you know, doing my own type of thing. So I started with a uh, multi-level marketing and I did that, the MLM for a while. And I met a lot of people. I gained a lot of experience on how to like speak in front of crowds and, you know, how to motivate people and stuff like that. So I did that for a while. Then I actually opened a business where I was selling personalized roses to different, you know, to different kind of uh, events and different people. And I built that from the ground up. It didn't really do well. It didn't really take off at all. But I had a vision of where I wanted to take it with with uh, personalized roses and messages and different colors that you could like put an actual uh, message into carve it into the rose. It was something crazy I wanted to try doing. So I did that for like a year. That didn't really work out. Um, then I went back to the corporate route and I worked for T-Mobile for a while and I did that. But there was always something in the back of my head that was like, you know what? You got a bigger purpose than to just be working a nine to five and reporting to somebody and not giving your talents out and your, your message to the world. So that's when I really got deep down with my clothing brand. Now, I know a lot of people say that, that same line of like, I was never fit for the nine to five. You know, that's why I got into it. And I believe everybody that, that does say that, but what makes your situation different? And like, give me the, give me the inside look of what that feeling felt like. I mean, it's a, it's a really strong feeling. I feel like you have to have a little taste of how it is to be able to create on your own. And you can't be scared of what other people think when you're trying to do something. So when I was working a job, when I, there's nothing against a nine to five or anything, that's actually what helped me boost my crisp. Like I would take everything I made from that nine to five and I would actually invest it right back into my clothing brand. So it's a great stepping stone to get started. But I feel like if you really, really want to change the world and you want to and you have a message and a passion, like I'm always fired up every single day. And I want to make sure that everybody can hear my story and everybody can you know, benefit off of it. And I figured, you know what, I have to go out on my own. I want to be able to be free. I want to control my destiny. I don't want to be stuck in like a bubble where I can't go above whatever I'm in. Like I, I have to be free and I have to have an open mind and, and I have to be able to create to what I feel like is right. And that's just what pushed me through to do my own thing. Yeah. So what has the experience been like? Has it been like a slow process? Was it like right away, fast, easy? Give yeah. me give me another inside look of from the moment that you made that decision that the nine to five is gone. 
So it was a rough, rough process. It was nothing. It was not a quick, a quick um, adjustment. It was something that I had to bust my butt constantly in and out as I was working the nine to five. And I, and I had the video, like I knew where I wanted to take crispy. I just, I had to push even harder because every time that I tried to push hard, I was not seeing any results for years. I didn't see any results for two years, two and a half years. The first year I lost money. The first year I invested everything I had into the brand and I was actually down probably over a hundred grand without seeing any profit at all. Now, a lot of people would give up at that point, but I said to myself, nothing, nothing easy is going to come like it will never turn to be great. So I had to keep pushing. So I kept pushing and pushing and pushing the whole entire year. I lost that much. The second year I was only profitable, like not even a thousand bucks for the whole entire year. But I had the vision. I knew where I wanted to take this brand. And I knew that it had the potential to be one of the biggest brands in the entire world within a five to 10 year time frame. So I knew that my, my, my purpose was this. There was nothing else left. I couldn't go turn back. I couldn't do it. I had to keep going and keep pushing. So what is that vision? What is that image that you're seeing? Because as, as a creative myself or as just an entrepreneur, or ever, whatever you want to name it, you have that image yeah. that you're trying to get to. And that image does change. But there is always that little image that you constantly see. Yeah. What is that for you? I feel that image, it, it goes back to when I was younger and my favorite sport was basketball. That's all I would play growing up. I would literally be on the court 24-7 every single day. Um, I was never able to make it to the NBA or my goals that I had back then. I did play some college ball. But I always wanted to incorporate my love for basketball and, like, athletics into my clothing brand. So my vision is to, when I see these athletes training, busting their butts every single day, I want them to be able to rock some pieces and wear some pieces that have a positive message behind it that lets them know anything is possible and to keep going. And I want to have the, as much people as possible know what that message is. And I feel like the best way to do that is, is with Crispy, the clothing brand. What's the message? The message is the world is yours. Never to give up, never to slow down, no matter what people say. Oh, you're not good enough. You're not going to be able to make it. You know, you're too short. You're too slow. Whatever, whatever, the, whatever the case is with that individual, do, don't ever listen to the noise and just keep going. That's a, that's a great that's message. That's the message. That's a great message. And that's something that in sports, like I was a, an athlete myself and I played um, basketball, football, baseball. And that's something that the coaches, you know, always try to instill in you. But for some players, they don't want to listen to the coach. So to have an outside person that cares about the players as well, that the players are like, this guy, he's got a dope style. He's yeah. got a dope message. That does translate sometimes even better than what the coach would have to say and Absolutely. what the coach is trying to get across. So you're, in a way, you're like that motivational coach exactly. to these players. It's like when you, uh, when you don't listen to your parents, but you listen to you know, your aunt or uncle, like your cool uncle. It's yeah. kind of like that same type of vibe. It's 100%. And, uh, I used to have uh, I used to have someone kind of like that, like in my basketball. His name was Mo DJ, DJ Ammo, and he would be at all the games, and he was just like he was a cool DJ. He always came dripped out, That's he had fire. the chain, and he was dope. So he would always kind of give me those like little motivational uh. talks on the side, and uh, that was something that always pushed me through. So it's it's dope to see yeah, someone sure. else that is also trying to push that positive message because you know like. Kids, they, they do need it. Like, when you're in high school and you're in college, you do need that extra push. You have no idea what's to come in this percent. world. And, like, if you could somehow avoid a lot of the, the nonsense and a lot of the, uh, the chatter by having someone, like, direct you through that, that's a beautiful thing. That so that, It's percent. awesome to see. Um, sure. who, who are some of the, the players that rock your stuff and some of the people uh, that you like are, are vibing out with all the it, time? It, it's crazy because how it all started when, when I first started the brand, I didn't know any players. I didn't know any athletes, no NBA players, no NFL players. I always thought that was something like, oh, yeah, I can never get to that point. But, again, I had such determination. So what I would do is I would DM hundreds of athletes every single day and say, hey, man, I got this new clothing brand. 
you know, I think it would be dope if you rock some stuff. And I would be sending out so many free samples to people. It was crazy. I was, I was not making anything. But I figured, you know what? I have to build a culture. No one knows who Crispy is, especially people that are in the NBA or the NFL. No one's going to want to wear shorts that they don't know where it's coming from. So I was always pushing that message. And now to this point now, I've, ga I've gathered all these like actual friendships with these players that I used to just DM and, and talk through Instagram. And I've actually met a couple. Right now, the NBA draft is in two days. So we're going to be going there. And a lot of guys that I've, I've been cool with since high school are in the draft. School Henderson is one of my good friends. He's going to be going either one or two overall in the draft. And he's always rocking my stuff. He loves the message behind it. You know, we've hung out. Jonathan Kaminga from the Warriors. Desmond Bain from the Grizzlies. These are all people who I consider my friends now. And they actually motivate me as well to see their story coming up from high school when I met them to the transition that they are now, superstars in the NBA. It's crazy. It's a crazy transition. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, when, when Joe had first – uh, tap me in with you or I had seen uh, some of the stuff he was posting and I, I followed you I'm like man this guy is, he's a genius like I, I think that um, the way that you're de delivering the message and the way that it's being translated is really such a dope way to do it like you're just giving back and giving back and giving back and now it's coming back to you in so many different ways yeah, and sure. with just friendships alone. But like the way that I saw from scrolling through your Instagram of that growth, like you could see it just from your page. Yeah. And like now understanding even a little bit more, like I didn't even understand that there was a whole entire message behind it yeah. of like the world is yours. Like, yeah, you know, I was a ball player too, but some people told me I was too short. But look what I did. I played in college. Now mm -hmm. I'm over here. I'm doing stuff that is including basketball in different ways. So that's dope. Have you uh, yeah, sure. have you gotten to any other sports uh, like divisions with people? Like, are yeah. you in with baseball people, football at all? Yeah, it's crazy because football as well. Um, it started out mainly basketball, but as it grew, and all these other athletes, you know, would would shout me out, and then I would, you know, some of their friends who played football would follow me. And now it eventually got to where I'm cool with a lot of NFL players now as well, a lot of Dolphin players. Um, so it, it, it's crazy how the world works because it's like a 360. It came right back to where I started. And now a lot of these different players are actually, you know, rocking my stuff, referring me to their, their teammates and their friends. I'm going to NBA games, being on the court with my son, showing him that everything I wanted to do as a kid, I'm showing him. That's the whole entire reason behind me going so hard with this besides the message i want to show him that anything is possible so you know we're in football we have some baseball players that are rocking this stuff a lot of college athletes we're doing a lot of uh, collabs with different college athletes where we'll create their merch and we would partner with them and they would do their own you know their own shirts and their own shorts or whatever the case is so we're we're expanding it definitely so when you say full circle i see the full circle but i want to understand when you were little, what got you into basketball? Was it a certain person? Was it a certain player? Yeah. What, was it just like that was your essence? Give, Man, give me it, that. It was actually a certain player. Stephon Marbury was my favorite player of all time. He is a beast. So when I would watch him playing when I was like seven years old, eight years old, I'm like, I had his pictures all in my room. Like I had all the magazines, the basketball cards. I'm like, I love this. I got to be where he's at. And I really in my head when I was that age, 10 years old, 11 years old, I thought I was making it. Like, I was gung-ho about making the NBA. You could ask anybody when I was growing up. And everybody thought I was crazy because I was short, but I, and I didn't even care. But I was like, I'm making it. I'm doing whatever it takes, being out there 6 a.m., doing the same workouts they do. And it's just so crazy because, you know, after a while, it comes to a point where, like, all right, you're not going to make the NBA. So now you're in college. You dropped out of college. You were in the team. You did good. But then you just left it. And then, you know, life happens. And now, 10 years later – 11 years later, it all, like, runs right back to where it all started. Yeah. What college did you play at? I played at uh, Roxbury Community College in Boston. That's awesome. So I was in Boston. I was a walk-on. There you go. And that's much more part of the message, too. That's all the hard work and dedication. Like, yeah. if, you're, if you're a walk-on and you make the team and you make an impact, like, that's how you just know that you're dedicated. Of course. Like, for real. Because, like, not many people be doing that. Yeah, no, you know for what I mean? sure. That's awesome. 
Um, so I always ask this question uh, on this interview because it always garners a different response. Um, what does success mean to you? Success means to me, well, there's, there's, there's different parts of success. Success means to me is that your health, number one, you have to be healthy. If you're not healthy, no matter how much money you make, people think success is defined by how much money you have. That's, that's not true because you could be rich but not healthy. What's that going to do for you? You know what I mean? So I think it's for health, family, and wealth as well. So as long as you have those three things and everything is cool, then I think that you're, you're, you're successful. Now, for that third part, for the wealth, is there a number that is comfortable? Is there a number that you think would really define that success? I don't think there's a number. I think certain people are comfortable with, with certain amounts. Like some person could make 100000 and they're completely happy and they're completely fine with life. So they're wealthy in their mind. They're wealthy, 100%. Some people are like, nah, this is not enough. I got to make millions. Then whatever they define that as, I just think it's whatever you're happy with and whatever you're comfortable with, then, then that's the true wealth. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you said, it's what's in your mind. What's that wealth in your mind? That's yeah. really all that matters. That's all that matters. It's like right when those, those voices go away or maybe they don't go away, but they fade out a little bit. I yeah. think that's where maybe I would see personally like, uh, a moment of wow I'm, I'm at a certain point of success for myself is like willowing those those thoughts for away sure. that of like where you know it's like I've been at it I've been doing it yeah. and this is like a nice moment where I can maybe not relax yeah but like you could take the it body in. could just like take it in and, and take it easy for a second yeah um, for sure has there been any moments you know, in your life or in this last three years that you have felt like you want to give up or you have felt that, yeah, you know what, like this ain't it. I would be lying if I said there wasn't because this was probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life is building this. Uh, there was a lot of times where I'm like, you know what, I've given out so much free stuff. I've not made any sales. It's been a year. I'm nowhere near profitable. Every time I, I, I go harder, I don't see any progression. Should I just hang it all up? But then there's a voice in the back of my head that says, get the hell up and stop complaining. You're not a wimp. You need to make this happen. You have a family. You have people that, that count on you. You cannot start this and, and then just give up. Why would you come this far? And the voice is so strong where I'm like, I have to snap out of it. I'm like, no, nah, I can't. I can't slow down right now. I've started something that's going to become one of the biggest clothing brands, athletic brands in the world. And if I, if I give up now, that'll never happen. So it just keeps pushing me and pushing me and pushing me until where I'm finally, after three years, you know, seeing a turnaround for all that work that I put in the previous two years. Yeah, that's a, that's a nice moment. Yeah, that's a nice moment. For sure. So, so for, for your style, for your clothing brand, how is that developed and do you see it taking on a new world? Do you have anything new that you're about to drop? So I like to say that you, as an entrepreneur and, and, and a business owner, you have to adapt to what's happening. You know what? You know what I mean? Like 10 years ago, the style is not going to be the same style that's now. So you have to be literally able to create something with the drop of a dime to be able to, to, to be ahead of the curve because fashion is changing literally every day. Right now, one of the biggest things that's coming in is uh, AI intelligence, artificial intelligence. So I feel as I want to be one of the pioneers of that because I know for sure fashion and e-com and online uh, shopping is going to veer towards that avenue. So I want to create something where when you go onto my website, instead of just reading a product description, oh, this fits size 36 to 38 waist for my shorts, or this is, you know, a seven inch inseam. I want a 3D model actually wearing the shorts, size medium, size small, and all the sizes where you could spin them around and see exactly how the shorts fit. You know what I mean? Or, or click a button and then it'll put the t-shirt on to see how long the t-shirt is. So if you're 5'8", 180 pounds, you type that in, it'll have a model automatically populate with that size characteristics and have the actual shorts or the shirt or the hoodie on the model so you could see how it looks. <laughs> that's, that's so fire. I've never seen that, but that's what I want to do. I'm giving right. you the the <laughs> That is that is so fire. Oh my god. Yeah. Wow. 
So I know people probably ask you this, and I definitely want to ask you this because I guess I'm in a simu- similar situation, but I don't know if it's similar at all. No. So what's the legalities of your branding and how you flip it upside down yeah. and like chop and screw it in different ways? What's the legalities behind it? So basically, if you're not using, you could use whatever logos you want. But if it's already something that's out there that's trademarked, you have to change. You can't use the same exact logo. Mm-hmm. So as long as you change it, it's over 35% from the original actual logo, you're good. So by flipping it all around, it's a totally different logo than the original. Or by moving the name of the team or whatever you're using and putting your own thing and switching the face of a logo or something like that, you're totally fine. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. my band, we're, we're named Toy Machine. Um and that's a skate brand. So when we are naming it, we're like, I don't know. Like, I don't really know if th- we should do this or not. But that 33% rule or yeah. the 35% 35. rule, like, they're just toy machine. Like, and we are undercase toy, they're like yeah. all uppercase machine. And then we have an exclamation point at the end. Well, listen, but I don't know if we're ever going to run into an issue, but I would assume that it's also different sectors of business too. Yeah. Um, in my case, but. for sure. And also if you think about it, what are the chances that you're going to create a design that's never been done before? 100%. Probably zero because designs have been around for thousands of years. The chances of you creating something brand new out of the thin air is not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree with that. Um, I, I really love the style. Like I'm definitely going to be for sure. copping some stuff from you. Thanks. No doubt about it. Um, what was the first piece that you made? The first piece I made was a tank top <laughs> that said crispy on it. And it was like a WWE font. And it said crispy going around a white one with turquoise and a black with turquoise. And that was my first piece that I dropped. And I thought it was like, oh, my God, this is the biggest thing I've ever done. Drops a, a, a tank top that says crispy on it. And it's crazy because three years later, I've done more than 300 pieces. <laughs> How was that received, that first drop? Uh, that first drop, no one bought it except, like, my friends and family, my close friends and family. Yeah. Because <laughs> I kind of forced them to buy it. But, yeah. That's, uh, how, that's how it all starts, man. Like, yeah. Any, anything, like, yeah. Yeah, from, from music to apparel to, like, anything that you need support. It's always yeah. those friends and family first that they, it's like, nah, you, you have to, you have to have this. Exactly. Have exactly. Wow. That's For really sure. cool. So, so what's... What's next for, for Crispy? Like, what is the next style, or is there a collab that's coming out? Well, right now, we're actually, we're, we, we already completed it. I'm just waiting for everything to get printed and the samples ready. We're doing a, um, a whole drop with football, NFL teams, where we're going to freak the logos, make it our own, completely different. And I feel like, you know, a lot of people are doing different shorts and teams and stuff like that. No one's really giving football love like that. So I feel like once I drop this, it's gonna it's gonna change the game. Wow. For sure. Wow. Who are the who are the teams that you you are like fans of? So I grew up a Giant fan since I grew up around here. Then when I moved to Miami, I, I like the Dolphins as well. So I like a, a lot of bunch of teams. I mean, I was a real big New Jersey Net fan, but then they moved to Brooklyn, so then I was, kind of fell off with that. So. Right now, I, I mean, I, I mess with all the teams. Right now, I don't have, like, a, an actual favorite like that. But uh, it was definitely the New Jersey Nets. So we're going to manifest here for a second. Yeah. Who are three athletes that you want to wear your stuff? Oh, well, definitely LeBron James. That's a, that's a fact. I've been working on that. Um, haven't really got him to wear anything yet. Haven't gotten anything to him. But definitely LeBron James. Steph Curry, I think that, that would be pretty dope. Steph Curry will wear some of the brand as well. And then I would probably say, I mean, Jordan Clarkson, he's got one of the, bo- the dopest styles in the NBA. I would love for him to rock some of my shorts. So definitely working on that as well. Who would you say is the biggest influential, influential person that has rocked your stuff so far? The big would probably be Ashanti. Ashanti was an R&B singer from the, yeah. from the early 2000s. She was... She actually gave her a hoodie backstage, and um, I put in a nice little package, and I got to meet her and hang out with her the whole entire concert. So shout out to Killer Touch and the city is mine for making that happen. 
I think that was a huge moment for me when she wore it with the hoodie and she held it up and we did the video. That was amazing. I saw that video. That was crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're backstage and she was so excited too. <laughs> she was like, she was so happy. The packaging was so dope it too. It was dope. Like that that was an awesome video. It was dope. Yeah, man. You you've been you've definitely been doing a lot. I've I've been, you know, tapping in with everything that you've been up to. And yeah, uh sure. you're definitely an influential person and I'm I'm happy to like talk with you more and understand yeah. a little bit more of what your vision is. Um to to end it cuz we're we're running uh at about like 30 minutes now but uh, um i i guess i want to end it with kind of knowing i lost my track yeah no nah, it's been i like, lost my track but Give me one second. Okay. We've been rolling for 30 minutes, oh, so that's, yeah. not, that's not a short time. No, not at all. Has so many, there are so many questions. Yeah, there are not, there's <laughs> a lot going on for sure. Off the top, too. <laughs> for sure. So when you do hit that moment of success for you, what are you going to do with that? Uh, see, that, that, that's a tough one because the way that I am, I'm never really satisfied f of, of what I have. I, ha I don't even think I've touched the surface of what I know that I'm capable of bringing this brand to. Um, but I feel like as if when I do reach that moment, one of the parts of that moment is when I'm able to, to buy my mom a home in either in Miami or anywhere in South Florida, right on the border and the beach, and then I have – a similar home a little further away down there where we can vacation for the winter. That's definitely something I'm pushing for. Um, but I feel like once my son turns 18 and he's old enough and, and he sees, because I put I bring him to everything I do with the brand. And my vision is to put this build this brand to where it is and pass it on to him and create a legacy. So I feel that my, my goal and my passion is not complete until I'm able to keep on building this and actually make a legacy out of this and pass it on to my son. Then I'll really feel like, okay, what I've done, it's, it's, it, it is where it is because of what I've done. Yeah. That's beautiful. And he's down with the, he's down with he's the, down with it. he's down with it all. That, he loves it. And I love, I, that pushes me every day. That is fires beautiful. me up. So I want to get, this is my final last question. Yeah. Give me in a quick summary the 10 year plan and what that is going to bring you. So the 10 year plan. All right. So right now we're on uh, year three. So I had envisioned and my, one of my goals was in between three and five years. I wanted it um, crispy to be a multi million dollar brand. Uh, right now it's already a million dollar brand. Um, all blessings and thank God for making me be able and capable of running such a thing. But I want it to be a multi million dollar uh, brand by five years. Between five and seven years, I want to make sure that my Crispy Kids collection, which is a whole other brand out of Crispy NYC for the children and for the kids, I want that to be established and to be running. I want um, Crispy Athletes, which is a program that I also created for athletes. I want that to be established and having partnerships with all the different colleges across the country. And then within seven to ten years, I want to be able to say, you know what, I built a billion dollar brand. And it is literally running, um, not on autopilot, but it's running where I don't physically have to be doing all these tasks myself, where I have a team that's just as fired up as I am, and they're running around, and I have a 10,000, 20,000 foot square, uh, square foot warehouse, and getting shipping nice and quickly to the customers, and I, I want to be able to make this the biggest brand ever. Where are you working out of right now? Right now, uh, I was funny you asked. Right now I'm in a uh, storage unit. It's 10 by 30, so it's like 300 square feet. But I'm building the ground up a new warehouse, which is an actual garage, and I'm flipping the entire garage and extending it to making it a thousand foot, um, a, square, a thousand square foot warehouse for all my inventory now. That's awesome. Yeah.
Are you going to be able to do like any type of shopping in there, like as a consumer, or is um, that going to be just for the inventory? You know, there's going to be a podcast in there too. So I actually really, um, you know, Joe over here, he actually introduced me to this whole podcast world a couple of years ago. And um, I'm like, you know what? There needs to be a podcast for fashion, for clothing brand owners. So I'm going to do something called Keep It Crispy. And it's going to be a podcast. I'm going to interview a whole bunch of my friends, my athlete friends, clothing brand owners, and just trying to get everybody, you know, to, to invest in themselves and do their own thing. Wow, that's, that's great. Yeah. I love that. Joe, Joe is a, he's a super influential person. For great sure. guy. Super helpful. Uh, you want to give any shouts out to, to anybody else? Yeah, actually, I want to shout out my, my brother, Zach, who's, uh, who's from Miami. I moved to Miami about a year and a half ago. I was just, and you know, I was trying to build a brand out there. Um, you know, I, I had, I didn't know anybody in Miami at all. I was, you know, I was trying to get everything out there and move it around and, you know, shake up different cities. Zach was one of my first friends who I met out there. He literally DM'd me on Instagram. He was like, hey, man, I love the clothing brand. I see you're out here in Miami. You know, if you give me some shorts, I'll pass it on to my clients because he cuts a lot of celebrities and a lot of different athletes. So, I mean, he's been a blessing, man. He's helped me through a lot of rough times while I was out there alone. Introduced me to a lot of different players. My man Haywood Highsmith on the Heat. He introduced me to Xavier Howard on the Dolphins. A bunch of other cool, cool guys, which we all became friends. So I'd like to shout out Zach Blends. Fire. That's awesome. You always need that guy that's going to help out. For sure. You know, and get you in that door. And if that's not like your boy like that, he's now inspired you to be able to put you know, other people in that situation for sure. from your likeness. So that's awesome to always have that. Um, but I appreciate you coming on, seriously. Uh, this definitely won't be the last time. This is Crispy 1.0. For sure. Um, we're about to get into a, a Joe Fucarino 2.0. All right, let's but, get uh, it. I, I appreciate you again. And um, I know that this brand is going to bring oh, you even you, more success. For sure. And I, I do see your vision with it all. And um, – I'm always here to, to help you out as well. Nah, so, appreciate it, man. so let Thank me know you. whenever whenever you need anything. Let's go. Oh, that was good, man.